Hello and good day, eh? Welcome to the Super Good Camping Podcast. My name is Pamela. And I'm Tim. And we are here because we are on a mission to inspire other families to enjoy camping adventures such as we have with our kids. Today we wanted to talk about essentials for camping and we have six planned, but there may be some bonuses at the end. (laughs) All right, so the first thing I want to say is when you go camping, I don't care whether you're in a car, whether you're backcountry, which we know I like, um, it, it... Whether you're going on a day hike, make sure that somebody else has your itinerary. It makes it considerably more difficult should something, heaven forbid, knock on wood, that's me pounding on my head, um, should anybody run into a problem and and then need a rescue, if they don't know where you are, it's considerably more difficult to rescue you. So make sure that somebody has your itinerary, at least one person. The list of essential gear applies to obviously to backcountry camping because you know it's not like you can pop out to walmart from there in your car and pick up whatever else you don't have but it also applies to things like day hikes make sure you've got all of these things in your pack even if they're in a in a you know a a light version of uh what what we're about to talk about heaven forbid you get you get lost uh somebody twists an ankle whatever and the, the you know the sun setting you're gonna run into trouble so just just do me a favor. Throw throw these things in your pack and take them with you. There's not it's not too much weight. It's not a big deal. We're going to start with uh, not necessarily in order, although pretty darn close. You need some form of location finding navigation. So there's an app. My three words. Something three words. It, you know whether it's that if you've got a, a signal. Um, I don't really think about those things because a lot of times when we're back country, there is no signal, so it's kind of pointless. But I always take a map. I always have a compass. If you've got a GPS, that certainly won't hurt. Uh, We also drag around a a satellite messenger. For me, it's the Zolio, budgetarily, and yeah, mostly cost. Uh, I just don't need anything more than that. I can tie it to my phone if I need to make a bigger message. You know, butt covering 101, I can push the SOS. They can track it, triangulate it, and and come save my butt. So make sure you've got those things. And, And my map, it could be a Jeff's map if you've been in the game long enough to own one of those. It could be the government's uh, topographical maps. Uh, Those are excellent. Uh, Just there's more detail to them. There's more information. So you can sort things out better that way. Next topic would be a headlamp, some form of lighting. Sun starts setting, you're going to be in trouble. If you can't see, you're stopped dead, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you don't know where you are, the best thing to do is stay there. You know, a search and rescue is going to start at the point that what your itinerary says where you should be, and then they will work backwards from there. So staying where you are isn't a bad thing. If you have a map and you know what you're doing and you're headed towards civilization, I guess, then you're going to need a headlamp if you're going to keep going through the night. Or, you know, just even things like, for sake of argument, say, say you actually have matches, you're going to want to start a fire, you're going to need a headlamp to go around and collect up wood, stuff like that. You want to stay warm, so that's not a bad thing. When you set out, make sure it's a fully charged headlamp and or you have spare batteries with you. I have multiple headlamps. Some of them take batteries. Some of them are onboard batteries that I charge. So there you go. A flashlight's not a bad thing either. And and having more than one of these isn't a bad thing either. If one goes for a crap, you've got a backup. So, uh, you know, a small mag light or something like that wouldn't be a bad thing. Or a Lucy lamp is also good. I mean, it, it unfortunately, the, the nice thing about headlamps is it frees up your hands to do other things whether it's cutting wood whether what whatever you know you say you have extra things and you're gonna you're gonna be able to cook dinner uh, a headlamp makes your life much easier but lucy lamp is not ideal because you have to hold it but it is ideal because it doesn't necessarily need a power source you can charge it even in an overcast day you can get a decent charge into it on it on or during the day because it has a solar uh, panel on the top of it and it doesn't use a ton of uh, it doesn't doesn't use a ton of the battery power to illuminate things. Doesn't have a ton of throw to it, but it certainly light your immediate area for you. I'm going to uh, toss it over to the better half here because because medical professional, she's going to tackle first aid. The first aid supplies you want to have with you. We were talking about this earlier about how there's no doctor close by. If you're in the middle of nowhere, you have to be your own doctor sometimes. And you don't want to just bleed out because you forgot to bring a, a tensor bandage or something with you. That would suck. So, yes, we want to bring band-aids with us. Um, just to try to, if you've cut yourself, you want to keep things clean. So on that, along those lines, you want alcohol pads and polysporin to keep things clean also. Especially if you're, like, if you're out in the backwoods for a week and you cut yourself on the first day, you don't want to be having an affected foot that you can't get around on by the time you're trying to leave. 
leave. Splint, just again, you've you've broken something. Now the good thing with being out in the woods is that you can use a you can even use a branch or a stick as a splint if you need to, so you can improvise on splints. Iodine, that's another good thing for helping to sterilize something if you happen to have had a cut or an injury. Tweezers, just to get splinters out if you happen to have acquired a splinter, and or just also it to pull a tick. So if you happen to have acquired a tick, then you need the tweezers to pull that out. Matches, waterproof matches, because then if you they happen to get wet, they're still going to work. Tensor bandages, just to, to, to try to kind of protect yourself if you have injured something. Gauze pads to also bandage up an injury. A little medical booklet might not be a bad idea too, just if somebody's experiencing some symptoms, you're not sure what's exactly going on, you're not a doctor yourself, then you want to be able to figure out if maybe they're having some heat stroke, maybe they're having dehydration, you not need to be able to figure out what's happening, what, what are these symptoms about. An emergency blanket, so if you do get stranded out somewhere that you've got something to keep yourself warm. A water purification tablets too, so if you run out of water, you took a water bottle with you, but you were not unexpectedly long and now it's you're gonna have to drink from the lake, this way you're able to drink some clean water and painkillers too just again if you've had some sort of injury and you're you physically have to get yourself out of where you are you need to be able to reduce the pain make it tolerable so you can get out and then back to Tim. Sort of next on the list for me is food and water. A day hike, throw a bunch of granola bars in, a couple of bottles of water. So here's one for you. We did the crack at Killarney a few years back. It's about a, we did it pretty quickly. I want to say about two and a half hours, three hours, something yeah, like see. that. And I think, I think it's rated at about a four hour hike. Some of us are a little more driven than others on occasion. <laughs> it was a fantastic hike and it wasn't crazy hot. Although I, mean, I started sweating in March, maybe slow down a bit in the sweating department in November. You wear t-shirts in the middle of winter. (laughs) I got problems. But we took three water bottles, I think, and we were rationing it by a quarter of the way back. We were starting to go, oh, okay, we got to stretch this out a bit. And we didn't, like the dog, (laughs) we didn't anticipate needing extra water for the dog. Yeah, yeah. Poor poor planning uh, on my part. Hadn't really given thought for him. So you lose a lot of water that way, trying to feed him out of your hand or trying to water him out of your hand. Water is a really important one. Again, even if it's on a day hike, take take tons. I know it's heavy, but get over it, man. You, you're going to really, it's really going to suck if you don't have water. Bonuses, if you took a water filter to cover, because they're, they're pretty light, uh, it covers your butt. If you, you know, come across a stream and you've run out, um, you really, really don't want to drink the water and take a chance on some of the bad things that will happen to your insides because it may end up costing you quite a bit more than just being thirsty. Bonus, if you happen to have a stove with you or the ability to collect firewood and those matches in your first aid kit, you could always boil and you have something that's not plastic. You could boil some water, which would be fine. Of the food and water, water is the most important. Granola bars, trail mix, it's it's heavy, but it's got a lot of, a lot of go-go juice in it. Thomas and I dehydrate uh, quite a bit of food for our backcountry trips. It weighs nothing. It takes forever to rehydrate if you use cold water. So you would ideally like to have boiled water to do it, but it will rehydrate. Most of it will. Like there's like kidney beans and stuff. So chili wouldn't. You'd spend like hours waiting for that stuff to get rehydrated. But oatmeal and, and things like that's pretty easy. You know, you're 20 minutes, maybe half an hour with cold water. And then we move on to shelter. So the first thing right out of the gate, I'll, I'll reference back to the first aid, emergency blankets. That that will a, keep you warm, in, especially in shoulder seasons or, you know, temperature drops at night, even in the summer. Or you get a weird Alberta clipper come in or something like that, which we had at... Uh, in Algonquin last year, and it dropped to it dropped to single digits in the middle of July. So at night, it was uh, not particularly fun. That emergency blanket will keep you warm, keep you keep you dry if you can be under it. Do all the things you need to. That's there's shelter for you. There's a nice nice light easy one if you're taking your first aid kit with you. You're covered. If you're taking more or your or your backcountry, you know, uh, try to have a tent. That's that's the ideal. Next would be you know stepping to sort of halfway between it and the emergency blanket would be a tarp. A bit of paracord would be nice. So you can string it up and get underneath it. You know, even a garbage bag. Sudden rain squall throws up. Garbage bag will keep you dry, which will keep your core temperature from dropping as you get wet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's all, it's all good things to have. And then I'd say last but not least, a knife or a multi-tool. A knife in particular is a form of protection from, from whatever. You can cut wood with it uh, to make yourself a fire. Again, assuming you've got those matches in your first aid kit. 
if you don't have scissors in your first aid kit and you've got to cut a bandage or something to tie a splint or what have you, that knife's that knife's it's going to come in handy. You'd be surprised at just even even just a single blade. It's definitely on my essential list. And then bonuses, I would say, you know, if you've got space for it, again, they're not particularly heavy things. Some of them are, are a little bulky, and it depends on, you know, if you're going to go for a two-day hike, it might be nice to have, you know, sleeping bags and pads with you, something to cook in, whether whether it's, a, you know, like a small mess kit and an MSR stove. Spare clothes is never a bad thing. Again, you hit that rain squall, somebody slips and falls into a creek, anything along those lines. Wet clothes are, are a crappy to be in. Nobody enjoys that. And they're going to suck a lot of the body heat out of you. So you don't want to be like that. As a scouter, we drill into the kids that we always bring extra socks. You do not want to be in wet feet um, because blisters or because foot infections or because whatever. We just always have extra dry socks. Yeah, nasty. Blisters are, are nasty when you've, got to, when you've got to hike your way back out of somewhere. It's because there's no weight to, unless you can do handstands. There's no, there's no way around it. You're, you're, yeah, if, if your socks are wet, you're going to be, you're going to have blisters. That's, that's crappy. So that's our list of essential gear, including the bonuses. And that would be applying to backcountry camping, but also front country camping. If you're going for a lengthy hike, you need to have at least a downsized version of a lot of those things with you, just in case of emergency or unexpected events. And that's it for us for today. It's Super Bowl Sunday as we're recording this. And I don't know, who, who is your pick? Uh, I don't. It's not, the bills aren't in it, so I, I don't even care. <laughs> so, um, to me, I don't know. Tom Brady's not in it, and Patrick He's Mahomes not. is not in it, He's so not. they're forcing for me. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go with the Bengals. It's going to be a good game regardless. Enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks for listening. It, you, if you would like to connect with us, we would always love to hear from you. Our, our email address is hi at supergoodcamping.com. That's H-I at supergoodcamping.com. And otherwise, you can connect with us on all the social media, and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.